Hello, welcome to the second episode of our series on inferential tests. And uh, this presentation talks about the basic inferential tests that we may apply, especially for researches in the social sciences. This presentation shows the criteria or things that we need to consider so that we can identify the test that is appropriate to the research that we are conducting. But before we continue, do not forget to like this video, hit the subscription and notification bell to stay updated of future videos. The first consideration is your research objective. So you ask yourself, what is the objective of your research or what is the objective of doing the test? Is your objective to compare or determine differences between and among groups? Or is your objective to correlate or to explore relationship or to explore association? You need to identify which is which. Correlate, relationship, and association are three overlapping terms that, that may mean the same thing when we are talking about hypothesis testing. Problems on differences uh, may be indicated by keywords like, is there a significant difference between the performance between this group and that group, or the height and weight of this group and that group? The next consideration is to identify which type of test you are going to use. We mentioned this in the previous video, so if you were not able to watch that video, kindly go to that video first. As a brief recall, a parametric test is a test that passes some assumption. The first one is called the normality assumption, and uh, this assumption is telling that in terms of the scores, majority are average, few are high, and few are low, meaning few are found at the extreme points of the scale. Another one, the variables must be at least in interval scale. This is because in a parametric test, we are actually comparing the means between groups. So if that variable is not numerical, then we cannot actually compute for the mean and the parametric test is somehow meaningless. Non-parametric test is applicable if we have some reason to believe that it is far from meeting that normality assumption or the variables that we are talking about is not numerical, it is in ordinary scale. Just a quick review on the different levels of a variable. We have either categorical or numerical. For categorical, we have nominal, those variables that can be ordered. For example, eye color, sex, nationality. We also have ordinal. These are still categorical variables, but this time can be ranked or ordered. For example, we have military rank, another military rank. I'm sorry, it was repeated. And we have stages of cancer. Numerical variables are either interval or ratio. For interval variables, zero is not absolute. A zero value for that variable does not mean that the variable is absent. For example, we have emotional quotient, intelligence quotient, temperature. When temperature is zero degrees Celsius, it doesn't mean that the temperature does not exist. Same through with IQ and EQ. For ratio, Zero is indeed absolute. For example, your height, when the height is zero centimeters, then that entity that we are measuring is actually non-existent. Also for weight and for area, for example, floor area or field area. We are reviewing this because uh, we mentioned that for ordinal variables, we apply non-parametric tests. And for interval and ratio variables, this is where parametric test is applicable. Let us proceed to our criteria of choosing the appropriate test for our research, for our problem. So after deciding whether to use parametric and non-parametric test, the next to decide is whether you are comparing two groups or you're comparing more than two groups, so either three or four or five and so on, or you are comparing a single group to a constant. For example, you are hypothesizing that a group of people, the height of that particular group, the mean, is not significantly different to a specific height, say 
160 centimeters. Same through for non-parametric test should you choose non-parametric test. It's the same. You need to identify whether in your problem you are comparing two groups or you are comparing more than two groups or you're comparing a single group to a constant. Example of a problem that compares two groups. In your research, you are comparing the height difference between male and female. The two groups are the group of male uh, respondents and the group of female respondents. You are comparing performances of students. You grouped your students into two sections, section A and section B. So obviously, there are two uh, sections being compared or students from public and private schools. Comparing more than two, you have three or more sections or students from different colleges of Benguet State University. There are eight colleges in Benguet State University and there are three institutes. Okay, after identifying how many groups are being compared, so remember, this inferential test is all about mean comparison. We are not talking about correlation. After identifying the number of groups being compared, you need to identify also if those groups, two groups or more than two groups, are independent or related. Sometimes, we use repeated for related because it is possible. What do we mean by independent groups and related groups? Here is an example. Independent samples are those whose respondents for each group are different. If your two groups are students from section A and section B, then each student must belong to a single section. So it must belong to section A or section B. It cannot be both. If it belongs to section A, then it cannot belong to section B. The students that belong to section A are a different set of students from those that are in section B. So different people, different sections. They are independent. The two samples are related. If, for example, the students, the same set of students, evaluate two teaching strategies, so, for example, a teacher used the traditional teaching strategy for the first week and then here comes the second week. And for the same set of students, the teacher used another teaching strategy. For this one, we are comparing the performance of students in two different strategies. So, we are comparing two groups still. However, the two groups are considered related because in each group, the people are the same. Here comes the different tests. There's a lot of tests. If you are doing a parametric test and you are comparing one group to a constant, the appropriate test is called t-test or z-test. If you are doing a parametric test and you are comparing two groups, but those two groups are independent, so the people or the respondents or the subjects in each of the two groups are different, then we are doing t-test for independent samples because if those groups are related then the appropriate test is still t-test but it's paired t-test t-test for independent samples is a different test from paired t-test for more than two groups and if those groups are independent the appropriate analysis is analysis of variance and if those groups are related the appropriate parametric test is called analysis of variance for repeated measures. Also, if you are doing a non-parametric test, you have two groups and those groups are related, then the appropriate non-parametric test is called the Wilcoxon signed round test. If you are comparing more than two groups, non-parametric, and those groups are independent, meaning subjects for each of those groups are different, then we use the kruskal wallis h test. This means also that the non-parametric equivalent of t-test or z-test for one group is sign test or binomial test. The non-parametric equivalent of t-test for independent samples is called man whitney u-test. For paired t-test, it's called Wilcoxon signed rank test. For ANOVA, it's Kruskal-Wallis test, and for analysis of variance repeated measures, it's called Friedman rank test. Those are our tests, simple and basic tests that we may apply if our goal, if the objective of the study is to compare mean or median. Comparison is the key 
word. What about if we are trying to conduct a correlation or association analysis? There's only one thing that we need to look at. It's the level of measurement of the variables that we are correlating. If we are correlating, this means that we have at least two variables because it's the variables that we correlate. For example, the two variables are numerical, so it's either interval or ratio. Then the correlation analysis appropriate for that is the Pearson product, moment correlation coefficient, or simply Pearson's R. For example, correlation between students' grade in math and English. So your first variable is performance in math. It could be measured in terms of a test or a grade. Same with uh, English performance. It could be measured using a test or a grade. Since the two variables are truly numerical, then the Pearson product moment correlation coefficient is appropriate. If the two variables being correlated are ordinal, the variables are categorical but can be ranked, then the appropriate uh, correlation analysis is called the Spearman law. If the variables are categorical but we are not really sure if that is ordinal, so it could be nominal, it could be a mixture of nominal and uh, ordinal, the condition is that the two variables being correlated are categorical, we could apply the chi-square test or the Fisher exact probability test. We have an example here. Suppose we are associating uh, age, so age is categorized as either young, middle, or old, and the evaluation of the quality of a product poor, fair, and excellent. So we are trying to correlate whether young people would tend to uh, rate that product excellent and old people would rate that product poor. So that's the problem maybe. Since both of them are categorical, we can apply uh, the chi-square test. So here are the most basic correlation analysis. There are a lot of correlation analysis different from this one. I'm just presenting you the most basic. How do we interpret a correlation coefficient? Because if we conduct this correlation analysis, we would actually just be arriving first a correlation coefficient. It is just a number ranging from 1 to 0, or ranging from 0 to 1. That is either positive or negative. So actually, it ranges from negative 1 going to 0 and then going to positive 1. So in a correlation analysis, we can identify the strength of the relationship. How strong are the two variables related? If the coefficient computed from the analysis is zero, well, obviously there is no correlation. If it's a small number, 0 0.01 to 0 0.19, we can interpret that as very weak. If it's 0 0.80 to 0.99, that correlation is actually very strong. And if it's exactly one that is a perfect correlation of course this seldom happens uh, getting a perfect correlation what else can we get from a correlation analysis aside from the strength of the relationship we can also uh, interpret the direction a correlation coefficient is either positive or negative if it's positive we say that the relationship is direct. This means that if one variable increases, the other variable increases in vice versa. If one variable for negative coefficients, the relationship is termed as inverse. This means that if one variable increases, the other variable decreases in vice versa. In the three different illustrations here, the first picture is an illustration where the correlation is positive. So there is a linear correlation and it's actually progressing from the bottom left towards the upper right. If it's the opposite, but there is still a relationship, then the correlation is called negative. This is a scenario where the two variables are not correlated at all. Just be very careful of correlation analysis because correlation analysis does not imply causation. This means that if you are correlating two variables, let's uh, go back to our example, math and English. Suppose we computed a very high or a very strong correlation between math and English performance or grades. Does it mean that getting a high grade in English 
is because of a high grade in math. Does it affect the English grade or vice versa? Is the English grade affecting the math grade? Is the reason of getting a high grade is because the student has a high grade in English? That is not the concern of correlation analysis. Correlation analysis only describes the relationship. There's a lot of possible things that might happen. If we are interested of whether one variable has a direct effect on the other or the effect of one variable to the other, then the appropriate analysis is not a correlation analysis but another analysis called a regression analysis. Although we will not be presenting regression analysis in this presentation. So this is what we mean by correlation analysis. This is the end of this presentation. In the next video, we will be uh, illustrating how to perform the different uh, inferential tests, mean comparisons, and correlation using Excel. I will see you there.